These are the plaintiffs, Martha and Luke Norris. Martha says they have a small pool maintenance business, and they service the defendant's pool, and he refuses to pay them for all their hard work. That's right. That guy sold his house, and he somehow feels he shouldn't pay for all the services they rendered. Then that's not right. They're suing for $2,821.85, the amount they're owed. This is the defendant, David Humphreys. He says the plaintiffs asked him if he wanted a new pool cleaning system, and he told them no, because the one he had worked just fine. The plaintiffs went ahead and installed the new cleaning system anyway. Now they expect him to pay for it? No way. He's accused of being all wet. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiffs own a pool supply and cleaning service, and the defendant will not return a pool cleaning system, and the plaintiffs want their money. But the defendant claims he told the plaintiffs he was selling his house, and if they wanted the equipment back, they should have picked it up. It's the case of stop pooling around. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Luke Pool Services, owned here by uh, Mr. and Mrs. Norris. You're suing David Humphreys, your former client, for $2,821.85. You say he owes you and refuses to pay. Uh, who wants to tell me the story, um, Mr. or Mrs. Norris? Um, Mrs. Norris, I will, Your Honor. Okay. Marty Norris here. Um, Mr. Humphreys was a customer of ours for about two years for pool service, as well as we installed pumps and things like that on his pool. And then he had an older pool cleaner. It's like the robot that you see running around the pool. It was more than 10 years old and it wasn't working. And then Mr. Humphreys would tell us that it wasn't working and Luke had repaired it at least twice. And then what happens is we will get loaner demo cleaners from manufacturers and to stop the customer from complaining about what their pool looks like, sometimes we'll put a demo in their pool. Is and that why you do it? I figured it was loaner. so you could sell the, the product. Well, some of it, so they'll stop complaining, but, they, <laughs> but also to sell it. Okay. But also to sell it. Okay, so go and ahead. So knew, you put one in was, his pool when? Uh, I would say it would have probably went in in like March. And did he That's want correct. that or did he tell you, no, I don't need that? He didn't say he didn't want it because at the time we did not know, but he had put his house on the market. So, of course, they want their pool to look good. Well, well, I'm sorry. I need to know exactly what your discussion was with him, not what you think was in his head. What exactly did you say and what did he say when you brought the new Creepy Crawly or whatever brand it was? There was no discussion. Oh, you just dropped it in his house? I just dropped it in his pool cleaner, and and he knew that it was there. How did he know? Because he saw it visually. You just put it in his pool without his permission, without going through it with him, without without asking him if he wanted it. You just put it in his pool. That's Is that right, what you're yes. saying? Yes, yes, Your Honor. And then what happens? Uh, he, uh, we got a notice that he was selling his house. How did you get? How did you get the notice? Uh, he told us by email. Okay. That he was selling the house. Okay. And uh, we didn't get the cleaner. We didn't pick up the cleaner in enough time. And then the new purchase and purchased the house and uh, they refused to give the cleaner back. And it, and it was a loaner. All you have to do is unscrew it from the wall and remove it. Right. So we uh, we made a mistake. We put a lien on the other person's house uh, and they told us that they were going to uh, sue us because they weren't the one that that did it. Yeah. I don't think you can put a lien on the other person's house. You have no, no contractual relationship with them. Oh my goodness. But you... Mr. Mr. Humphreys refused to give us his name. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Yeah, I know. You want your thing back. I got it. I'm not, I'm not dumb. I did notice there was a new one. There was no discussion. I didn't want it. It just showed up one day. I don't swim in March or February. I thought it was more like December they put it in there. It had been in there a couple of months. In any event, in March of 2021, I contacted them. That's when my house went under contract. And I said, I'm not going to need your services anymore. March will be the last month. Okay. How did you contact them? That was by telephone. Okay. Uh, uh, who did house. you speak to? Because most people, when they put their house on the market, want their house to look good. So I don't think but you was, canceled it, it them under, in March. It, it, 
it was under contract. It wasn't on the market. Oh, it was the, under heck contract. With, the heck with the new people then. <laughs> all right. No, no. In my when did your home, house I go thinking, under contract? In March. All right. Do you have any? All right. So do you agree, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Norris, that he notified you in March? Um, we do not have an email that he notified us in March. He could be correct in stating that, but we had um, poor admins answering our phones. And so many times I would be out in the field cleaning pools. And so I do the first time I knew that the house was for sale was when I went to his house, probably the middle of April to clean the when pool. Did you close the on, uh, when did you close on the property? May 10th. May 10th. Okay. So when they went in April, you paid them, didn't you? Well, I made a payment in April. I made a payment. Uh, I gave you uh, in my evidence. I, I've made several payments. Well, but I told them. I, right. I, I think They're my, saying my, you didn't pay February, March and April. You have given me something purporting to be a March payment, 304.65, and then a payment in April. A credit card payment. And the credit card payment in April is in a strange amount that doesn't apply, $205.78. And then there's another one up here, 78.66. Why these weird amounts that aren't the I amount don't of know. your service? They send me invoices and I pay the invoices. I don't, okay. think I, should, I don't think I should be liable for April. I called him. I, sold, I said, Do please stop service. I don't want April. I'll take care of the pool myself. All the leaves had fallen. I could take care of it for a month before this new owner takes over. Okay. When you called um, them, did you tell them to pick up their machine too or not really? No, I didn't. I gave them, I called them in March. And I said, stop okay. service. I'm selling my house. They had. Do you a, a have month. the invoices that they sent you? Like, why are there two credit card payments? One for 7866 and one for 205 your Honor, I, I didn't just pull those out of thin air. They said They're very specific. That said, so that said, you have some invoices number, that you've introduced into evidence, Ms. Norris. But when were those invoices created? Were they created for court or are they what you sent him? And if you sent it to him, how is it that you bill your customers? Do you bill them by email? Yes, we bill them by email. Okay. And we use so show me the that emails that you sent to him in February, March and April. Not the invoices, the emails. Show me the emails that you sent to him with the invoices. Um, I don't have them with me today, but I can forward well, them Well, you can, you. no, but you can access them now. Why can't you access them now? We're on vacation. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> you can pull up your you're on vacation, but you're in, you're in trial too. Um, so don't you have the emails, Mr. Humphreys? I have an email for uh, an invoice that was dated June 1st. No, that's the one after the fact the where they sue you for everything. I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in the one that went out in February, March, and April. Do you? Can you just look up that those emails? No, I cannot. But you can get it, right? I could probably get it with some work, but I don't have it. All right. Um, Your Honor, yeah. Mr. Humphreys also yeah. spoke to me after the new owner took um, – took possession of the property and told me that he knew that the cleaner belonged to us and that he would help us get it back. What can I tell he you? He stated that to, to us in a phone conversation. And that's very nice of him. Did you try to help them get it back? I, I tried, but the owner said that came with the property. Well, it did. Said, well, it came with the property, with the, but it, it, this is such a pickle because you leave it behind. You gave it to the guy. that got you. It's like basically you left your stuff at his house for five months and he told you I'm selling the house and then you still don't go pick it up. And then it's gone and you want him to pay for it or the other guy to pay for it. It's kind of complicated, right? It's kind of uh, not how it works because I have to find that he owes you that, that he obligated himself to pay you for that. And what it is is a, a series of unfortunate events all caused by mismanagement. They're not his fault. Um, yeah, if it were me, I would realize it and I would I would say, hey, guys, do your job. But it's not his job to tell you to do your job. Here's what's going to happen. I'm giving you guys 24 hours to get your act together. Both sides. I want you, Mr. Humphreys, to make the effort to get checks and payments from all your credit cards. And if you find more evidence of payments in 2021, I would like to see them. Ms. Norris and Mr. Norris, I want you, when we're done, to spend the next hour getting what I want. So you need to send me proof of how you emailed him the bill for the January cleanup, the February cleanup, the March cleanup. 
and I'm not gonna order him to pay the April cleanup, but send, so January, February, and March cleanup, because I find that he did cancel you guys. He sounds exactly like the kind of guy who'd leave the pool dirty for the next people. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry, but it does kind of sound that way. Um, so, it, so it's really, really what we're talking about is January, February, March that you're trying to get paid for and we wanna make sure you did get paid for. Okay, as for the cleaner, I am not gonna order him to pay you for the cleaner. I find that to be mismanagement on you guys' part. And yes, it's sad that you're out, but if someone's gonna be out, it's not gonna be him, he didn't buy that, why would he be out? It's really up to you guys to keep control of your inventory. Um, so on that issue, I'm ruling in his favor. On the issue of the pool maintenance, I'm going to give you guys 24 hours to submit the appropriate documentation, both sides. That's it. Good luck. So the judge really, in effect, finds for the defendant here unless the plaintiffs can prove what they really uh, are due to be paid. Uh, let me talk to you, Mr. and Ms. Doris. You understand what the judge wants? Yes, we understand, Your Honor. It's not Your Honor. Well, I'm not. I'm not Your Honor. <laughs> I'm sorry. But you understand. We, her we, under, we, un, yeah. we understand. It, it was a mistake on our part to, um, you know, last year we were working very hard and we just didn't pick it up. And I don't honestly think it was in his pool more than three months. But we didn't pick it up, and that's our mistake. Yeah, that's a, yeah, it's your fault. That's on you guys. Uh, all right, Mr. Humphreys. You hear what yes, the sir. judge says? Uh, are you okay with that decision? I'm sure you are. Am I right? Yes, of course. Of course I am. All right, sir. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank Good you. luck to you. Okay. Okay, Doug. Well, look, here's the update. Both sides provided the documentation they needed. Uh, the plaintiffs got the money for the services that they rendered, but they are out of luck with respect to the equipment because they abandoned it. Marilyn, who's better in a crisis? You or me? Wow. Um, you know, after 29 years of marriage and 32 years together, I'm not sure how to answer that because I think there have been times and situations where I'm better and then there's times and situations right. where you're better. You have a tendency yeah. to panic right. about, like, the tiniest the thing. You'll go on and, and on. Never, this I is never. a catastrophe of biblical proportions. That's a, the never. kids make fun of you for that all the time. That's like, true. Yeah, right. But I don't worry leading up to the, the event. You worry. I panic. Up to the event. Yeah, I, I, I am I'm a nervous person, but in a crisis. But you know, the, in the, it that's depends the question. On the, it in depends a on the nature yeah. of the crisis. Like, you know, like when, when you ran over Squeaker in the driveway oh, with, the van, oh. with the van and the kids were in the van and somebody had to clean up the mess, <laughs> I took care of it. Yeah. And um, who, who stole your wallet back from the pickpocket oh in my New York, gosh well we that's in, how i uh, fell in love with Broadway you we were crossing sixth avenue right. to go watch a show and somebody reached into my purse and took my wallet right and i wasn't sure you said are you sure i said i think I'm, yes i'm sure we bamboozled them into in the middle of the street in a six great. lane highway you were screaming at them <laughs> showing your badge and they're like what are you talking about and then they just handed back the that's wallet right. and everybody on the sidewalk said are you crazy i know this is new york you can't do that I we know. were here on yeah, that was nuts. If I had to do it again, I'd probably say, just take the wallet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> now I have a lot more common sense, right? <laughs>